we're going to begin discussing what people call complexity classes. These are classes of problems and their difficulty. So the first of these is what we call P. This is a problem is in P if it can be solved in polynomial time. Very reasonable thing. So things we've studied so far that have this, this stuff like minimum spanning tree, stuff like shortest path tree, stuff like union find, stuff like all of our sorting algorithms, stuff like even the Fibonacci numbers, which we looked at, and those we actually had an exponential runtime, but you could solve it in uh, linear time. So if a solution exists that can solve in polynomial time, not your solution, but a solution exists, you might not even be able to come up with a solution. It could be possible that you can mathematically prove such a solution exists without actually finding it yourself. That is something that can occur. So this is pretty much everything we've studied so far. A slightly more complicated class is what we call NP problems. These are problems that can be verified in polynomial time. Not necessarily that you can find the solution, but that you can check that it is correct in polynomial time. This seems like it's a minor tweak, being able to find a solution versus being able to verify a solution. Those seem very similar. And in fact, the reason that this is called NP, this one's called polynomial. NP stands for non-deterministic polynomial. I believe that you'll learn about this if you take either automata theory or um, programming languages. You should learn about this, non-deterministic polynomial. Which, uh, you might, I might get scolded by some people for saying this, but I'll give a rough idea of what non-determinism is. It's, you could solve this in a polynomial time if you were just clever enough at some point. Given several options, if you could always somehow choose the correct option, you could do this in polynomial time. That's what this is saying. Problems that are in NP are some that we just looked at, which are the satisfiability problem, which I, I, we call SAT. There's the Hamiltonian path problem. There's the traveling salesman problem. There are some other ones we'll look at in these lectures, which are click or clique, depending on where you're from. There's independent set. There is uh, vertex cover. There is set cover and potentially some other ones that are all in here. Notice that if it's in P, it's definitely in NP. Because if I can solve it in polynomial time, I can, of course, check it in polynomial time. I just solve it and then compare the answers. So this is, of course, going to be a smaller set than this one. Now for the strange thing. So we have NP here. These might both seem like reasonable things of there's problems that are hard to solve, but potentially easy to check. And there's problems that are easy to solve. Easy meaning polynomial here. We're going to talk about a class called NP complete, the name of this unit. A problem is NP complete, if it's in NP. They weren't very clever there, were they? Uh, and, and this is the part that looks like, how the hell would you ever prove this? Every problem in NP can be reduced to this problem in polynomial time. So every single problem, all the ones you studied in this class, every single one of them can be reduced to this problem, including any problem that can be solved in polynomial time. You can do something and write it in terms of this NP complete problem. This sounds like these should be these mythological creatures which do not exist, but it turns out there are lots of NP complete problems. If you Google for a list of NP complete problems, you can go to Wikipedia. There's a large, large list of them, and you can explore some of these. We will study some of these. Some of these include the traveling salesman problem. They include the satisfiability problem. They include the clique problem. They include Hamiltonian path. They include a whole bunch of problems. We will see how we can prove this later, and we will do several proofs, and I will ask you guys to do several proofs of proving a problem is MP complete. We will look at some problems later that are MP complete, but before we do that, we want to make sure to understand what are these things and how are they important and how do they relate to each other. So the best way to do this for most people is to visualize these things as sets. So I'm going to do two different pictures. The first one is going to be if P isn't equal to NP. 
in this picture, I'm going to draw the set P. It's here. Then I'm going to draw the set NP. It's out here. And then somewhere outside of P, but inside of NP, are these problems that we call MP complete problems. And in a sense, those are the hardest NP problems because every single problem in here, every single one in the entire area, can be reduced to the MP complete problem. So if I could solve these problems, not just these problems, any problem, one, just one, just one of the problems, that's all we need. If I could solve one of those problems in polynomial time, the, the jig is up and every single problem in here can be solved in polynomial time. So these are, in a sense, our hardest problems, the MP complete problems. So that's why I usually write them at the top. This is a typical way people will draw this picture. It turns out that there's other problems outside of here, up here, that we call the NP hard problems, which we remove the fact that they need to be in NP. They could potentially be outside of it and you can just reduce problems to these NP hard problems. So those are, those are our major sets. If P is equal to NP, the picture looks much less interesting. It looks like this. Well, here's P, which is equal to NP, and then there's these special weird guys up here called the NP complete problems. And that's it. I presume most of you have heard this question be asked, is P equal to NP? This is a question of, is this the case? This originally was being studied when these problems first came out and people assumed it might take, you know, a couple years to solve. This has been around since maybe the 70s at this point and people have made effectively no progress in solving it. This problem is literally a million dollar problem because it's one of the millennium problems. If you can solve this, uh, I will guarantee to give you an A plus in this class. Uh, let's do better. Uh, I'll, I'll probably be willing to say that the department would give you a PhD. I'll also probably be willing to say that you would be known throughout the rest of history as one of the most important computer scientists to ever live if you could solve this problem. It's worth trying, just because it's a fun exercise, to try and solve any of the MP complete problems, any of the problems I showed you on the list of hard problems. See if you could solve any of them in polynomial time. It's just a fun exercise to see why is it hard and where does the hang up happen? That is a useful exercise for every computer scientist to do. So I recommend doing that. Don't, don't spend too much time on it because a lot of people have spent a lot of time on all of those problems and it made effectively no progress in helping us. If you do manage to solve one, maybe don't publish your work immediately because one problem that is in NP is kind of important is factoring of numbers into their prime divisors. This is actually an NP problem as far as we're aware, and we assume that it is hard enough that it takes too long to solve. Why do we assume that? It's because most of cryptography relies on factoring to work and not be crackable in a reasonable amount of time. So if you find out that P equals NP, almost all of the cryptography that happens on the internet might be suddenly become vulnerable to attack. So it might be important to warn some people that have interest in that uh, before you let out that you've potentially solved this in some way. So maybe pump the brakes a little if you do solve one of these problems. It is worth mentioning that most people assume that P is not equal to NP. Not everyone, but most people. And this tends to be the consensus among people that study these problems is that the P is not equal to NP because there's just some problems that seem like they should not have polynomial time algorithms and our lack of forward progress somewhat enforces that because proving that some problem can't be solved in polynomial time is harder than proving that some problem can be solved in polynomial time. You need to say that given any possible solution, it can't possibly work. Like it's not obvious that that's easy to do. So most people tend to think that this first picture is the case, but we, we don't know. We can't know at this point.